and welcome back. This is my another game review. I knocking another one out of the way here, and this is my review of Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles 2. Now, I review. I did a very short review a while back of the first Uzumaki Chronicles game. It was a, wasn't even five minutes long because I really don't want to talk about the game because I hated it. This game, however, I loved. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just get that out of the way first. I love this game. I really want there sometime in the future to do Uzumaki Chronicles 3, but considering how hard it worked out with the uh, Ultimate Ninja series, it probably won't happen anytime soon until the series, until the Naruto's finished, even though, you know, they really don't need to make the Ultimate Ninja games as often as they fucking do, because the Ultimate Ninja, or the Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 was a cutscene fest, like seriously, and barely anything new in it, so, yeah, but anyways, enough about that, um, hold on a sec here, okay. alright, so basically the plot of this game revolves around a fallen clan known as the Shirogane clan of, uh, Shinobi that were once resided on the border of the Land of Wind, they were a clan of puppet wielders, alright, however, and they created this weapon known as the Puppet Walker, which was a very powerful weapon and would definitely, if they decided to use it to aid the Land of Wind, which, you know, they didn't, then it would have definitely helped them in wartime. However, once their dark secret was, once a dark secret about their Puppet Walkers were revealed, and it's that they were using human test subjects and human sacrifices in order to create them. So they were banished from the Land of Wind, and of course they created a scene, they launched out a small rebellion using their puppet walkers, but it was no use, they were eventually driven out. So now the last three members are basically the vil the, the main villains in this, in this uh, game that are out for revenge now, th th and they strive to awaken what's known as the Master Puppet, which is a puppet that has the power to destroy entire nations. Alright, so... Yeah, it's a pretty heavy shit, so the uh, Land of... There's characters from the Land of Fire and the Land of Wind that... Basically, the Land of Fire and the Land of Wind are teaming up, um... But in order to revive the Master Puppet, they need to collect five spirit orbs. And there's a spirit orb in each of the five great nations. They've already collected four of them. And just in the beginning of this game, they just managed to collect the one from the Land of Wind. And previously, sometime, which is not really explained too well, which is not really important for it to, but they end up collecting the ones from the other lands, and now the only one that's left is the one from the Land of Fire. Alright, and basically the majority of the game is re revolved around not allowing them to collect the one, although the final boss of the game is the Master Puppet, and that is one of my complaints actually, which I'll get into a little in a little bit, but each one of the uh, clan leaders here controls a special type of puppet, you know, they all control puppet walkers, but they, get, they control a special kind of puppet, wh which is unique to them. For example, uh, Ibus, or I forget what his name is, he's basically the uh, big muscular mech guy. has like three big muscular puppets that he controls. No. Wait. Two or th either two or three of them, All right? And then the uh, female member, uh, I forget her. No, it's Meno, I think is her name, and she controls uh, giant bead-like puppets. And there's like two or three of them. Uh, one, when it comes to those two, one of them has two puppets and one of them has three. Okay, and then the leader uh, Ibuse controls like an alligator-like puppet, and he only has one of them. Alright, and they're able to control them from vast distances as well. And it helps them fight without actually having to, well, fight, you know, because they can just send them out. But then again, that's what kind of what their puppet walkers are for as well. So they're very dangerous, basically. Cause not only do they have the puppet walkers, 
but they also have their personal puppets. Alright. And for the most part, I really love this game. The uh, boss fights are really interesting. The, the boss fights are really good, except for the final boss fight, because it was way too fucking easy, considering you're fighting a, the master puppet, a puppet with the power to destroy entire nations. And it was just way too fucking easy. Honestly, that that's definitely a huge flaw of the game, I felt like. He, he did... It it didn't do the master puppet as much justice as as much justice as I would have expected it to. All right. So yeah, but other than that though, you know the story is pretty solid. You have characters like, um, in terms of playable characters in the story, you have Naruto and Sakura. You have uh, Shikamaru and Choji. You have uh, Kakashi and Guy. You have Gara and uh, Kankuro. You have Neji and uh, Rock Lee. Um, are there any others? I don't remember. But I don't think there are any others. Nope, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, still, you know, that's ten playable characters in the story, and a storyline that, in general, is not too incredibly lengthy. Alright, now there's also other mo other game modes. There's a, a s there's a versus mode, which is two players only. It doesn't, ain't, isn't compatible with one player versus the uh, computer. Alright, but basically, like, there's supposedly other playable characters besides just those ten that you can unlock, such as Sasuke, I can tell from the silhouette, but I haven't unlocked every character, though. And there's also a game mode known as Survival Mode, which is basically you trying to survive, basically, it starts out with, there's like a few, uh, uh th there's a few survival t missions, um, with, that starts out as like, Genin, and then goes Chunin, and Jonin, and etc. Alright, until you can finally complete them all, and they get, they start out fairly easy, but they get really fucking difficult, so, I have to hand them for that. It definitely is survival. And then, of course, there's also another game, a completely separate game mode that's all about side missions. Alright, all right, you know, D-Rank, um, A-Rank, or D-Rank, C-Rank, B-Rank, A-Rank, and S-Rank side missions. Alright, so basically, the storyline in general isn't incredibly lengthy, but there's enough content in this game as a whole to keep you into it. One thing I, um, one thing I felt w I was kind of weird though was that, like, if you look at the back of the uh, case here, so all sorts of characters like, you know, Na Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, uh, Kakashi, Lee, uh, Kankuro, Choji, Neji, Shikamaru, Guy. Gara and freaking Itachi and Kisame and like the shit like all of those characters are in here except for Sasuke who's never seen and Itachi and Kisame who are never seen and you know and this game doesn't really make it clear where in the storyline of Naruto it falls or if it's just completely randomized like it doesn't really make that clear Right, I was always just under the assumption that's just completely randomized, and like, also Tamari is in the actually in the story, but you never actually play as her though, unfortunately. So yeah, um, another complaint that I actually do have, which is a complaint that's just as severe for me as in the first game, it's still here. I have to mention it, and if they do happen to make ever a third game in the series in the future, then I really hope that they fix this. But the map screen where you have to travel is so fucking annoying. Not first, but when you get far enough through the game where you're traveling vast distances, like, there's no autosave feature for anything, there, you, there's no manual save, you basically have to, in order to save, you have to get to certain save points in the levels, or enter the leaf again, and before you, 
and before and after the cutscenes will give you an option to save. Um, and it's really fucking annoying. I hate that in the game. I do feel that it is a huge detriment of the game. Alright. Well, overall, though, if you haven't checked this game out yet, I do highly recommend it. It's still a very fun game. Far better than the first. The first, in my opinion, was absolute horse, absolute horse shit. Horse shit. But this is really fucking good, I think. Despite the flaw flaws in it that I mentioned, alright, so I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10, I do def and I definitely recommend it. So yeah, but anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.